Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, depending on where you're watching this presentation from, what part of the world. I'm Alan Bampton and I'm speaking to you from Dash Engineering in Melbourne, Australia, sunny Melbourne, Australia, although I say that, I say that a little bit ironically because we're on the cusp of summer and it's currently eight degrees Celsius and I have the heating on. But anyway, thank you for taking the time to view this presentation. I previously presented the SAPO seal in the Bearing Expo event in 2021. And what I'd like to do today is give you a brief recap of that presentation and an update on the successes that we've seen in the iron ore mining industry in Western Australia. Spherical roller bearings in cast iron plumber box are widely used in industry, particularly heavy industry and particularly the mining industry. However, sealing the plumber block housings in harsh environments, such as mines, has always been a challenge. And the SOPO seal was developed as an engineered solution for spherical roller bearings in plumber block housings. Now, Dash Engineering was founded around 10 years ago, in fact, 10 years ago this month, uh, and it was founded to fill a perceived gap in the reliability engineering industry because users of rotating equipment were found to not necessarily be given the correct solution for bearing failures from the bearing manufacturers, which were effectively the only source of information for users of, of bearings. Our uh, senior engineering staff at DASH have a combined experience of um, well over 60 years, probably more like over 70 years of experience in the industry, including with um, global leading manufacturers such as SKF and NSK. Our core business is uh, failure analysis of rotating equipment and generally uh, rolling element bearings because um, when a machine fails, it's not always or generally not the fault of the bearing. However, the bearing has the evidence of the problems within the machine. Uh, we consult with our clients in order to help them to improve the reliability of their rotating equipment. We are often asked to um, educate at universities on the fundamentals of bearings and uh, bearing technology and the um, application of, of bearings in rotating equipment. We conduct training courses for our clients, for maintenance personnel and for engineering personnel on, again, on the fundamentals and the operation of bearings. And occasionally we are asked to um, provide an expert witness to uh, any legal proceedings that, um, that may be happening generally regarding warranty. Today, I'd like to talk to you about conveyor pulleys and their general unreliability in the mining industry. Conveyor pulleys are arguably one of the most simple machines in the mining industry, yet they create millions of hours of unplanned downtime every year, and they are notoriously difficult to monitor and predict with vibration analysis or any other traditional condition monitoring methods. The pulley in the picture here is from is on an overland conveyor which transports around 30 million tonnes of iron ore per year. An unforeseen failure on one of these pulleys on this conveyor network causes around three days of downtime. Dash Engineering are uh, approaching 1,000 pulley bearings analysed from conveyor pulleys in the mining industry. The vast majority 
of failures in conveyor pulley bearings are caused by the ingress of contamination in the form of dirt or conveyed material and water. These are some of the uh, rogues gallery, if you like, of failures that we've seen. Um, we see dirt and water that has entered the housing and degraded the lubricant, effectively washing away the oil film within the grease and filling the housing with conveyed material and water. And you can see in the picture on the right hand side there, this is generally what we see, dirty water in the base of the housing, which um, degrades the lubricant and destroys the bearing. And what we often see is the dirty contamination ingresses through the housing seal, through the bearing, all the way to the other side of the housing, which you can see there was actually a blind housing in this case. And you can see that it's completely full of contamination. When we get the bearing for analysis, um, it's quite often this is a typical example of what it would look like. And then through our analysis after it's cleaned, there is a typical example of the damage we see where the lubrication film has been completely degraded and metallic contact occurs and the bearing fails, generally catastrophically. The current standard for sealing uh, plumber block housings on conveyor pulleys is a, a taconite seal, which is the traditional seal uh, for a plumber block housing. And the current industry standard is, has been termed a three barrier solution. And this is a, a, the terminology that major bearing manufacturers use. And the three barriers are firstly, grease is employed as a sealing medium within a labyrinth. And that labyrinth is backed up by a lip seal, generally a V-ring lip seal. The second barrier is a quantity of grease within the housing, um, which is uh, theoretically to act as a second barrier for contamination that gets in through the taconite seal. And thirdly, uh, the most recent addition is uh, fully sealed spherical roller bearings are the third barrier to contamination. <clears throat> our question and our client's question is, if the taconite seals work, why are two further barriers required? And why do we continually see this? And the answer is simple. It is because the housing seals do not work effectively in contaminated environments. Contamination migration is a term that we coined at Dash Engineering to describe the way the dirt and water utilizes the shaft rotation to migrate into and through the bearing. This is a, a typical example of what we see, and this is a prime example of a um, free barrier solution that has been, <clears throat> excuse me, utilized um, to uh, mitigate contamination. The uh, pulley is on the right hand side of the picture there, and then in between we can see the taconite seal. And then in between the taconite seal and the bearing, we see this um, effectively stagnant, solid piece of grease. Um, obviously, uh, probably far more grease than was initially installed into the housing, but uh, it appears that it's been pumped in over time so that it has actually filled the housing cavity completely. And then, of course, we have the bearing, and you'll notice on the other side of the bearing or the blind side of the of the plumber block housing, um, there appears to be a lot of contaminated grease. If we have a closer look, um, what we managed to do in this instance was we managed to um, peel back this stagnant um, grease with a spatula and we reveal 
a layer of contamination of, of dirt and water that appears to be using the grease in the housing as a pipeline. Uh, when we look again more closely, we can see that the dirt and water has breached the taconite seal and is effectively using the shaft to travel towards the bearing. And again, more closely again, we can see a perfect pipeline or layer of contamination that is um, traveling quite easily towards the bearing. And in fact, we saw from the first picture that this is, uh, and, and I should mention that this is the typical three barrier solution where we have a taconite seal, we have the grease in the housing cavity, and we have a fully sealed spherical roller bearing. But you will recall from the first picture that, that none of those barriers worked effectively against the contamination. So a brief recap on taconite seals. Uh, they were first developed in the 1960s, um, roughly 60 years ago. And there have been a number of variations over the years. But fundamentally, the design remains the same. They are a grease-filled labyrinth uh, combined with a lip seal. And if you, you will see from the picture on the left-hand side there, the, the circled um, cross-section of a uh, current design of taconite seal from a major manufacturer. What we have is a, a labyrinth or a torturous path that is um, purged regularly or even fed grease um, constantly in order to purge this labyrinth with fresh grease and uh, the theory being that the contamination is then forced back out through this labyrinth or torturous path before it breaches the contact lip seal, which is in behind the labyrinth here. Um, you'll see from these cross-sectional diagrams that there's over the years been various different designs, but as I said before, they are fundamentally the same. They, they are a, a, a labyrinth with a, a rotating part and a static part um, that uh, is supposedly inhibits the dirt and water from getting in um, past the contact lip seal. Um, you see the three first pictures there are what we call a horizontal labyrinth. And then most recently, there's been some vertical labyrinth designs. When we think about a spherical roller bearing in a plumber block housing, um, a spherical roller bearing is a self-aligning bearing. And particularly in an application such as the conveyor pulley, it needs to be an alignable application. The reason that we use spherical roller bearings is that um, uh, a conveyor pulley may need to be aligned such that so that the belt can track properly, for instance. Now, if we look at all of these taconite seal designs, uh, do they allow for misalignment and axial float, which is a requirement of a spherical roller bearing in a plumber block housing or in any application for that matter. You can see from the cross-sectional diagrams that there is very little accommodation of either misalignment or axial float. So with that said, SAPO seals were developed, as I said at the start of the presentation, as an engineered solution for sealing uh, conveyor pulley housings or plumber block housings containing spherical roller bearings. They are, in fact, truly misalignable up to two and a half degrees, which is the limit for spherical roller bearings. And they also allow for axial float. So misalignment and axial float are fundamentally required in a conveyor pulley application. And I will call on my lovely assistant, Jack, to show us how it works. You can see that we have angular misalignment ability and we have the ability for the whole unit to float. 
Thank you, Jack. Let's just have a quick look at that again. If I can make it work. There we are. So angular misalignment. You can see that the seal allows it perfectly and axial float obviously up to the limit of the locating rings in the housing. So let's uh, get rid of that. There we are. Now, the SAPO sealing system is it utilizes a positive pressure oil system. The acronym SAPO stands for self aligning positive oil seal. The reason there are a number of reasons for the oil system. Firstly, a seal, a contact lip seal, in order to function correctly and to give any sort of longevity requires lubricant. And grease will not effectively lubricate a contact lip seal. So a positive pressure oil system is employed to ensure that the oil seals within the SAPO seal unit are correctly lubricated and therefore will last a reasonable amount of time. And the added bonus of the oil system is that we can, uh, we utilize an accumulator that uh, you can see in our red monitoring box here. And a, that provides a sealed uh, positive pressure, just a spring loaded pressure of around half a bar to the seal. And then we also have a return line from the seal, which you can see on the left-hand side of the box there. Now, what this system allows us to do is to, um, firstly, as I said, lubricate the seal, but we can also flush the system. We can replace the oil. We can obviously sample the oil at any time using the return line. And all of this can be checked while the pulley is operational because this uh, monitoring box is placed outside of the machine guard. So with the SAPO seal, it is unlike previous or traditional taconite seals, it is monitorable, it is maintainable, and it is predictable. But as an added bonus, and uh, this isn't one of these ads where I offer you carving knives that can cut through a brick or saucepans that you can park your car on, um, they are in fact an alignment device. And what I mean by that is that um, even though we have a fully alignable seal that can um, allow the misalignment to the maximum amount that the spherical roller bearing can allow. Um, obviously, for the peak performance of the bearing, uh, a close alignment is, is preferable. So what we have enabled uh, the SAPO seal to do is give the um, maintenance team the ability to align the housing to within either two degrees or 0.5 of a degree, which is required for sealed spherical roller bearings. And all of this without having to take off the end cap of the housing as is, as is quite often done and put a dial indicator on the shaft and try and align uh, it accurately. So what can be done is as you can see in the um, in these diagrams, we have uh, holes in what we call the ring washer, which is the washer around the full face of the SAPO seal body. We have a set of two holes um, at 90 degree spacing around this ring washer. And there are also matching holes in the seal face itself. And so there's one large hole and one smaller hole. The larger hole allows for two degrees of alignment 
and the smaller hole for 0.5 of a degree if uh, a sealed spherical roller bearing is being utilised inside the housing. So it's simply a case of we utilise an eight millimetre diameter alignment pin. And if the pin goes into the larger hole, it's all good for two degrees, which is good for an open bearing. And if it goes into the smaller hole, it's all good for you accurate to within 0.5 of a degree of angular alignment. Now, obviously, the better the alignment, the better the bearing is going to function. So um, if they can put the alignment pin into the smaller hole, they're as accurate as they need to be. <clears throat> so as we discussed, the, uh, the predominant cause of premature and unpredictable bearing failures is the ingress of dirt and water and its um, via contamination migration process, as I described. And SAPO seals have been proven to successfully mitigate this contamination. And the picture that you see there is a um, is proof of that. Uh, this is a, a pulley that came out for um, I believe it was lagging failure. And when we lifted the cap of the housing, that is the sort of condition that we saw. And this is a good example of, um, of the uh, results that we're seeing from SAPO seals. So to give you some brief case studies, um, this uh, first one is a pulley that was installed on a, a the head pulley of an overland conveyor. It's a, the bearing size is a two three one double eight sealed spherical roller bearing. Its um, time in service was two point three three years, as compared to an average mean time between failure of this particular pulley location of one point two three years. So um, the Sapo seal. In, um, exceeded the mean time between failure by almost two times. The reason that the pulley was removed was because there was a high bearing temperature detected. When uh, the housings were opened, there was no evidence of contamination within the housing cavity or in the bearings. Um, this was a good study because we had in fact done failure analysis reports twice before for this exact pulley location. Um, the observations at the time were that the floating bearing temperature increased to a point that removal was deemed necessary. Upon analysis, the cause of the elevated temperature appeared to be insufficient internal clearance. So it, it was um, uh, discovered that it was possibly um, installed incorrectly, whereby the bearing was driven too far up the tapered sleeve. Uh, also noticed was the presence of grease containing solid additives. So um, uh, I, obviously as a countermeasure to the increased temperature, it appears that the maintenance team um, pumped in some grease with molybdenum and disulfide in it, um, which to be honest, probably exacerbated the problem. Um, the oil sampling during the monitoring visits from the SAPO seals indicated no ingress of contamination into the seal itself. And uh, previous failure prior to SAPO was a result of contamination ingress. And uh, in the following, in the, these pictures give you a good um, comparison of, um, firstly, the top two pictures are fixed bearing side. The left hand side picture is. Um, the housing cavity when the cap was taken off of the housing of the um, housing with the SAPO seal. And then on the right hand side of that is the previous, the immediate previous pulley that had a taconite seal. And you can see the difference in the housing cavity cleanliness. And again, with the um, floating bearing at the bottom two pictures there, the one on the left is with the SAPO seal. And the one on the right is the previous pulley with a taconite seal. Now, um, there appears to be some dark coloured grease in the floating bearing housing cavity. 
and that was found to be the grease that had been pumped in um, the the molybdenum disulfide grease that was obviously put in to try and give them more time when they detected a fault. Okay, second case study. Again, uh, this is from an Oberland conveyor, and again, it is a 23188 size bearing, which is a 410 mil shaft. Uh, in this particular case, uh, the time in service was 0.77 of a year, whereas the mean time between failure on average was 0.98. So it didn't make it to mean time between failure. The reason for the removal of the pulley was that there was a VA fault level uh, for a detected outer ring fault of a bearing, um, and that was based on historical uh, VA failures it obviously had reached a level where it was deemed to have failed previously. When the housing cap was lifted, there was no evidence of contamination. And again, this was one that DAS Engineering had done failure analysis reports on previous pulleys from this location. So the uh, when we analysed the bearings, we found that uh, the raceway surfaces had evidence of scuffing that appeared to have occurred prior to installation, so possibly from transportation or handling of the pulley um, during installation. Um, it did not appear to be of sufficient um, severity to have affected the bearing reliability. However, it may have been sufficient to have been uh, picked up by the VA and given that VA fault level. There was also evidence of lubrication breakdown and internal heat generation. This was thought to be from insufficient or incorrect initial lubricant fill. Um, it was also noted that these particular sealed bearings were of an extra high capacity design, uh, and this may have contributed to the sliding friction or heat generation and subsequent degradation of the lubricant. It should be noted that in the majority of cases in conveyor pulleys, um, the bearings are in fact underloaded. And um, perhaps in this case, the um, in installation of the highest load capacity bearing available may not have been, may have actually been counterproductive. Uh, the previous bearing analysis that, uh, that we conducted on a pulley prior to the installation of the SAPO seals indicated that the bearings failed or, or were damaged due to contamination ingress. So if we have a look at the comparison again, the top two um, pictures are the fixed bearing cavity, the one on the left is with the SAPO seal, as you can see, it's very, very clean. And the previous uh, fixed bearing housing cavity um, shows also quite clean with a little bit of, of um, breach of the taconite seal. The floating bearing housing cavities, again, the bottom left is the one with the SAPO seal, also clean. And then we see on the floating bearing side from the previous pulley with the taconite seal that um, in fact, contamination had breached the seal and was migrating towards the bearing. <clears throat> now, full disclosure, um, case study number three is from a tail pulley, uh, a 23130 sized sealed spherical roller bearings. Uh, the time in service for this particular one was um, 1.25 years as a compared to a mean time between failure on average of 0.58 of a year. So well over two times the mean time between failure historically. And the reason for pulley removal was that floating end bearing had failed and there was evidence of contamination. And in fact, that was the mode of failure. And this was a SAPO seal pulley. Uh, the result was that the floating end bearing had failed catastrophically. The fixed end housing cavity showed some contamination ingress. However, the bearing had no evidence of contamination. The monitoring of the SAPO seal system was uh, found to be sporadic over the two years. And there is in fact no record of any monitoring operations from the maintenance personnel for nine months prior to the failure. And the photos 
show that uh, you can see that the operating environment is extremely wet uh, on a tail pulley uh, with all the water and the dirt basically flowing down the belt. And you can see that the housing is completely covered in effectively wet mud. Um, these are the pictures from the strip down. You can see when we pulled the cap, the fixed bearing uh, did show some contamination had uh, got through the SOPO seal. When we analysed the bearing, there was no evidence of contamination actually within the bearing, but that was probably only a matter of time. And you can see from the, from the floating bearing end, the bearing has in fact failed catastrophically. So as I said, full disclosure um, from our case studies. In summary, the, um, in the four years uh, since we have been installing SAPO seal equipped conveyor pulleys in the iron ore uh, area in Western Australia, uh, 48 pulleys with SAPO seals have been installed on iron ore conveyor pulleys with bearing sizes ranging from 22213 through to 23188 spherical roller bearings. So that is um, uh, nominal bore sizes of 65 millimetres all the way through to 440 millimetres. Um, these pulleys were all selected by our client because of um, they generally had a mean time between failure on average of less than two years. <clears throat> so these were all um, pulley locations that were troublesome. Um, current operational status as of last month was uh, total pulleys with SOPO seals installed have been 71 pulleys to date. Currently in operation are 35 pulleys not yet installed of those 71 are 23 pulleys and 13 have been removed from service over the four years. In all of those, we have had one SOPO seal failure, which relates to less than 2% of all of the pulleys. The, if we look at the performance of the, the SOPO sealed pulleys versus uh, average mean time between failure of each pulley, the currently operating pulleys that have exceeded the mean time between failure are 22 of the 35. And obviously all of those 35 are still operational. So it's um, uh, that will number will increase as time goes on. And the removed pulleys that were removed after they exceeded mean time between failure was six out of the 13, so roughly 50%. Um, none of them, other than the one that failed, showed any um, evidence of contamination within the bearing. If we look at um, operational savings, uh, if we simply look at the number of tonnes that these um, Pulleys, these pulleys that have exceeded mean time between failure have allowed to be conveyed. So uh, it's effectively 1.81 million tonnes have been conveyed extra. Um, and you can relate that if you look at the current price of iron ore uh, to roughly 168 million US dollars or um, 110 million. Australian dollars. Now, it could be argued from the mining client that um, it's not really a fair way of measuring savings because the ore is still there. It's simply the conveying of it onto a ship and to their client uh, overseas has simply been delayed. So with that in mind, um, just this month, um, our uh, client um, highlighted within their system a uh, pulley that had just reached its historical mean time between failure of two years. And this is an extract from the um, presentation that they put out in their internal communications. And 
This was the his history of this particular pulley. Um, it's at the Dampier Port in Western Australia, and it is on the 216P wharf conveyor. There are two wharf conveyors at this particular port facility, and between them, they convey 100 million tonnes of ore to the shiploaders per year. So that's effectively 50 million tonnes each per year, which equates to around, I believe it's 137,000 tonnes per day per conveyor. Now, uh, so these head pulleys um, that uh, at the end of these conveyor have a track record of premature failure due to the ingress of dirt and water, uh, the traditional failure method that I've discussed previously, and um, they were resulting in catastrophic bearing failure. The historical data from the last 10 years indicates that the um, mean time between failure of the head pulley in question, which was the 216P head pulley, was just under two years. And between the two pulleys, of the seven failures that have occurred in the 10 years since 2012, three of them were unplanned, meaning that it was unplanned downtime. Now, what you need to consider with this particular pulley is that downtime is dollars lost because ship is waiting to be loaded and this conveyor, if it's down, the ship cannot load. So in summary, this pulley has now, in fact, two weeks ago, exceeded the historical mean time between failure. But not only that, an addition, an, an additional uh, feature of the SAPO seal system is that we can actually, on critical conveyor pulleys such as this, install permanently installed endoscopes, which can be um, which can be just connected to a mobile phone. Uh, the USB connection is inside the monitoring box with the oil accumulator and the return line. And it's simply a case of maintenance personnel can open the box, connect their phone or their laptop to the USB um, endoscope, and you can see inside the housing. And you can see from these pictures here that the both the housing cavities, this is a picture of the housing cavity in between the SAPO seal and the bearing. And you can see that the most recent photo is clear of contamination. The picture on the left there, which is actually the right side housing cavity, does show some grease, but it is the grease that is emanating from the bearing itself. Zero contamination. So as I said before, these, this system is fully monitorable, maintainable, and predictable. That concludes my presentation and I look forward to any queries or questions that you might have. Thank you.